So today we have my longtime friend, Lisette Mercal. She's a young, independent woman who traveled the world. And today I'll be asking some questions on how she achieved this because, man, I want you to travel the world too. So how are you, Lisette? Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for the invite. I'm very well. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. And this is your first time recording this kind of stuff, isn't it? This is the first time. Yeah, you're going to do I'm great. nervous at all. Oh, you, you don't look <laughs> nervous, so don't worry. Don't worry. This, this will be a great <laughs> time for both you and I and also the, person, the people that will be hearing us out after, well, let's say after we edit this, okay? So tell me a little bit about yourself, Lisette. Where were you born? So I was born here in the United States, in Miami specifically. Um, But then I was raised... I didn't know that. I thought you were born here in the Dominican Republic. No, but I was raised in the Dominican Republic. So I have both uh, nationalities. nationalities. Oh, nice. Um, So then when I graduated college, I came back to the States to work full time. And then I went to Spain to do a master's degree. You know, I didn't know that. You know, we've been, we knew each other f- from church, I believe so. Like, so, so long ago. How many years? Like 15 years. And I never knew that, I, that about you. I just thought you were born here. You were born and raised here, but you were born in, in Miami, which is quite nice. Yeah, yeah it was. It is. So tell me a little bit more about your journey. Um, you traveled the world, you know, by yourself. And sometimes with groups, but groups of people yeah. that you didn't even know who they yeah. were. Yeah. So how did that get started? Uh, is that something that you dreamt about? Um, tell me a little bit about that. So it is something that maybe I didn't dream about, but I knew it in my heart, like that was going to happen. But <laughs> if that makes sense, like I knew I was going to travel the world and be that free spirit for a while and all that. Uh, <laughs> So it just, it, it happened um, because I went to Spain to do a master's and I was like, well, I'm here. I might as well just take the opportunity to travel in my days off, the weekends and sometimes on vacation time. But I really had to make a really effort to do that because I had to save a lot of money. Um, so I paid for my master's degree and my whole year there and all my travels by myself. So. You know, that's yeah. quite an accomplishment. No matter who you are, no matter the gender, no matter the age, being able to pay everything by yourself, the traveling expenses and college, your master's yeah. degrees, that's a yeah. huge accomplishment. And so accommodations there, all the foods, every all my expenses. So I didn't man. I didn't receive any penny from anybody, my parents. <laughs> wow, that's that's a, that's an amazing accomplishment. So thank you. How did that happen? Because today in age, you know, we are bombarded with buy this, buy that, limited time offer. The next 10 orders, we'll be able to get the new iPhone 10 for a million gazillion dollars. (laughs) How did you avoid spending money on all that bullshit so you could actually, you know, pay for your education, which is not cheap, (laughs) and also pay for your travel expenses? Tell me about that. So... First, uh, when I got here, I received a gift from somebody uh, very important to me. It was a book that I have right here. Um, it's Dave Ramsey, The Total Money Makeover. This book inspired me a lot. I also had other books of finances, personal finance, uh, 30 day money cleans. And I also bought, I, I also bought like a, a journal to keep all my expenses and my budget. So so yeah, I started doing that, and one of the main uh, reasons um, that I get like inspired and intense about it is that Dave Ramsey says like if you live like no one else, later you can live like no one else. So at first I was very um, into savings, mm-hmm. um, but first I had when I came back to the states I got sick and I got a lot of death because. I went to the hospital and I didn't have insurance. So I had like almost $7,000 of debt and I just started a job. And I just read the book and I got like some knowledge and I just started paying off my debts and then I started saving all that I could. I was very privileged because I wasn't paying rent at the moment. 
Um, so I try to save all the money I can. And while all my friends were like buying cars, brand new cars and spending all the money of their paychecks. So man, how did you resist the temptation of, for example, not buying the best car or buying the best iPhone or buying the best clothing? How did you resist that? Tell me. I don't know. I just, I didn't resist it because I didn't want it. Okay. So I, I paid like half of my car in cash. I was very organized about what was I going to do. It was like, um, not a new car. It was a used car. And I just, I, I was very focused, like, okay, I'm in the States and you get bombarded with like all these credit cards and all this stuff to get in debt. And I just like, I'm not going to play that game. I'm going to play by my rules. So I wasn't tempted. I just was looking at other people spending money like crazy. And it just gave me anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, how can you do that? You know, um, sometimes when you grow up in a family that doesn't have a lot of money, um, you just value that and you just, you want to make the best for your future. You know, that's a, that's a great teaching uh, for everyone who is listening. Not everyone has the privilege of being born with tons of money or with a family yeah. that wants to, let's say, you know, that has the resources to pay for your education, to pay for your yeah. travel expenses, to pay for, you know, everything, to give you a car, to buy stuff. Yeah. So you were born in the United States, but you came here to Dominican Republic and you can see the stark difference between the <laughs> lifestyles of people yeah. and how people live in regards to, to how many, how, how, how poverty is rampant here in Dominican Republic yeah. and not in the United States. Exactly. So I suppose that also more or less influenced you in regards to spending, did it? It did, it did because I came from, um, my mom was the only provider in my family and I know um, all the sacrifices she put into me and all the things she taught me about finance too and the importance of, of having like a good funds for a future and I just spend it all. So, so how did you pay that $7,000 debt that you had? <laughs> because that's medical expenses. Once you are, yeah. once the medics are done, there's no more benefit. Of course, you, you feel good because yeah. they, they fix you. But still, seven thousand dollars. It's a lot of money because, well, you, you cannot make that money back from exactly. from the medical bill. So how do you how do you pay off that? Many people will say, "Don't pay it. Don't pay for it." But then it goes to collection agencies, and that reflects in your credit score. So I was um, just trying to save all the money. So what I did was a list with all the medical expenses from smallest to largest. And I started paying off or just calling them. Um, they will warn me like, this is going to collection. So before it goes to collection, I call them and I was like, okay, they are ready. They're already um, expecting to cut the losses when they go to collection. So it's already like, we're not going to get this money back. So I called them and I was like, okay, if I pay today, how much I have to pay from a thousand, maybe 300 or something like that. So I played with that. And I also, if they didn't give me that option, I just tried to say like, okay, I'm going to give you monthly payments of this amount. And I just started like writing off the smallest to the biggest. So that's how I did it. I just was very focused on that. And afterwards, I was just like focused on savings. You know, I, I read once about uh, really, let's say it sounds like a dumb tactic, but it's mm -hmm. not. And you, uh, what, what you just told me, remind me about that tactic of paying debts. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say that you have two debts, one of $10,000 and one of $3,000. So yeah. what I read is, it will be wiser or at least better for your mentality and your, you know, lower your anxiety <laughs> to pay off the yeah. smaller debt first. That's right. Okay? So that's something I read and that's something I believe that relates to what, to what you just told me. Yeah. Paying off the, the first, the, the things that were lower and yeah. also that were urgent. So yeah. does well, that make yeah. sense? It does make sense because when you write off like $200 and then you have 500 and then you have a thousand. You're like, wow, I did this. So 
I think like smaller accomplishment, like really motivate you and now all the money that you, that you save for those 500, now you can do it for the 700. Like you put that money towards it and like it goes, it's like a snowball, you know? So nice. it really works. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, I have a debt of the mortgage, mortgage, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mortgage, but I, yeah. I'm not willing to, to, to pay it off just now because I'm really investing so much money in my business. Yeah. But for someone who is like, I'm already making good money mm -hmm. and I have this debt, okay, the, the, the mortgage of my house, yeah. would you recommend that at least I pay a little bit of that so I can later save more money? Would you recommend? So what would you, what would you tell someone who is in my position? And later on, we could talk about yeah. you know, people who are not maybe making enough money. Tell me. Yeah. Well, I don't have a mortgage yet. <laughs> and coming soon. Um, it just depends on your priorities. If your priority now is like, like um, spend the money in your business and to grow it, then you'll have like more money to pay off your mortgage. You can maybe start saving a little bit. What I am doing, well, before going to... Uh, Barcelona and paying off my masters and my travels, I put on hold my student loans mm -hmm. and my car payments. It's not that I put them on hold, I would still pay them, but I didn't pay them off before I went. So it's just a question of um, just something about priorities. Okay, that's good to know. Personal. So um, let's, let's say that someone has, it's you know, 20 years old, let's say, who's just starting out with, with their life, and they want to do what you did, travel the world. And let's say that they didn't even had that massive debt, that massive yeah. medical debt, because that's, that money will never <laughs> come back, you know? <laughs> that's not an investment. It's an no. investment in your, in your, like, in your, in making yourself feel better, but that money, you will never get it's it gone. back. It's gone. It's gone. But, but let's imagine that yeah. there's no issues with that. that Maybe that they have uh, some student loans or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, because that's very common in the United States. <laughs> Here, not so much, Dominican Republic, but in the yeah. US, it is. So let's say this person has some student debt, uh, but they, they still want to travel the world. They still want to save up a little bit of money. And they also want to, uh, 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 let's say, pay off that student debt. How would you approach that? So I really put some money into my student loans before mm -hmm. I wanted to travel. Mm -hmm. And I was always checking how I could um, just pay more. But um, I think it, it depends. I started from zero and I want people to learn that they can start from zero too. I did accomplish a lot of things, um, my personal finances, uh, my life, but I started like literally from zero. So I think like, just be very intense and focus about your budget and about saving. Like mm -hmm. I didn't buy clothes in the longest time. If I didn't need it, I wouldn't buy it. Um, so as I was saving money, I got focused on other things in other areas, like working out, having a good diet and habits. So that made me pretty busy also for not spending <laughs> money. <laughs> but I will say just, um, just be to have a budget and to track all the expenses. What I did was tracking all my expenses and of the month and then I will see like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have bought this. Maybe this was too in so unnecessary. So I will say like that's key when you want to save some money. How do you track your budget? I used to use a, an app called YNAP. You need a budget. It's, an, it's, a, it's really an expensive app. But yeah. do you use like a, an app for your cell phone or did you do it everything up? by hand or just yeah. watching your, your bank statement? Tell me more about that. All of them. <laughs> so first, <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I tried everything, right? So first I started like printing out my bank statements and just like I had a, like I said, a journal where it's not a journal, but it's a personal finance budgeting thing. So I will track it down. I will highlight, I will write, and that will give me clar clarity, right? And I also use the app Mint to track all my budget. They give me like uh, warnings, like 
oh, you're off your budget of this. <laughs> you, you can make your own budget. You say, I want to spend a hundred dollars on the movies or dinners and all that. And they just send you warnings. You're like, okay. But, um, first I, I did it all. Like I needed to see in my hands. I like to write and that's what works for me. Okay. So you printed off the, the statements. The you statement. Yeah. You watched all, how much all, money you spent on X or Y? Did you like categorize them with the with the color? Yeah, yeah, it was categorized by household, like um, groceries and all that, or mm -hmm. like health, like even my health, my insurance, my pet's insurance, <laughs> the the fitness. Pet the, insurance? There's like pet is insurance that everywhere. like something in the United States? Yeah, it is. Pet insurance. Yes. Oh so man, I, I had no that. idea. <laughs> I had to pay for that. So, <laughs> um, also like if I joined uh, yoga and I'll put that into wellness, mm -hmm. everything. I, I categorize everything. It could get overwhelming, but you just try to make it as simple as you can. And But also it can be very overwhelming, but it also helps you and to open your eyes. Mm -hmm. so, because yeah. sometimes, sometimes what I've, pers what I've noticed from, from my friends that they truly spend a lot of money is that they have tons of tiny expenses yeah. that then add up. So let's yeah. say they went to dine out today, $20, $30, and then mm -hmm. tomorrow, same thing. And then the day after that, they bought some, a watch for $100 because, oh, that, it's an offer. It's 50% yeah. off. And mm -hmm. then the next day, they go again and spend more money on food that they could have yeah. they cook it in their house. Yeah. So um, would you say that those tiny expenses are the ones that are messing people's, let's say, budgets? Or is it Absolutely. like spending more, um, for Absolutely. example? Or not? Okay. I think so, like whatever tiny thing, it really adds up. And mm -hmm. also they don't, like I know people here, it's very normal that you go out to, I don't know, watch the Super Bowl or just out with your friends and just spend $200 in one night. And they think, okay, 200 but then the next day they spend more. It's just like they 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 had amnesia. They don't remember the the, the day before they spent that much money, and they keep spending. So it's a combination of both. People here are Americans are very, very um, over consuming they, everything. Yeah, consuming everything, and, and oh, you are an American. You yeah. are an American, but you were <laughs> raised here, so maybe. Yeah. That helped you out in, in not yeah. over consuming so much. Yeah, because you saw the scarcity, yeah. real scarcity here in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, but I also believe that it's very um, ingrained into the American culture to mm -hmm. have a lot of credit cards and have debts. Okay. So it's also since you're a kid, you're like, you need to have this credit card um, so you have more credit score and all that. Mm -hmm. But also, the system is very badly built because the more the more i write off a student loan i have like let's say five but they're so, the same they're so the same one, i understand that maybe my audience understand what's a write-off but i, I as like, a dominican i have no idea what what do you mean by write-off it is like a uh, pay completely okay okay so i have like five from the same uh, college but it was subsidized and all the federal uh, okay I don't even know, understand why, <laughs> but um, the more I pay off one, my credit score go lower. Okay. And the more I pay off my car, the more it gets lower because I'll have less debt. And also, if I pay, no, if I spend um, at least 5% of my credit card limit, just a 5% limit, my credit score goes down. It's insane. Oh. Oh. I don't know. It's insane. Oh. So, so you need to have a lot of credit cards. Yeah. You need to have a lot of credit better. cards. Okay. A lot of loans, cars, Macy's, <laughs> uh, Best Buy cards, everything. And okay. I believe that's something like I want to recommend people to not do that, especially immigrants. Uh -huh. The first thing they do here is get a lot of credit cards because they need to build a credit score. But if okay. they already have the money they don't really need to have all these credit cards. Oh my God. So <laughs> how, how, how did you solve that issue? You know, because maybe people want to build up their, their credit score, but yeah. they also, you know, they want to travel the world. They want <laughs> to see other places. Yeah. Even though, you know, for, you know, I see this. United States has so many states that 
you could consider that traveling to another state is like traveling the world. Yeah. But yeah. you know, it, it's for for Americans that's not considered traveling the world. Europe, you you go between you know different uh, places, yeah. and that's traveling the world. Yeah. Even though it's in like in the same landmass. Yeah. So, but still, what do you recommend people to do? Um, to ignore all of, all those things about credit score and stuff like that in order to save up money, pay off debt and travel the world. How, how could someone get started with that? So I'm still figuring that out <laughs> because it's insane. You want to have a good credit score, but you, at the end you don't need it because if you're going to save enough money, mm -hmm. you're going to buy your house with a good down payment and all that doesn't matter. If you have enough cash or enough savings, you don't really need a credit card or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but also, just be aware of that if that's your priority. But to travel, you really need to focus on the savings. And if you can, pay all the debt you can. If you cannot, if it's not a priority, if it's a student loan, you can stop it for as long as you need to. Um, the interest might be increasing, but you can stop that and you can still pay another like the car payments but you need to save all that you can you need to save you need to make that a priority mm -hmm. that's all i have to say it's very simple but it's it's easier to say it than than do it like um i will say like 80 percent is uh behavior and 20 percent is knowledge so okay so how yeah. can people let's talk first about the knowledge okay because people mm -hmm. love knowledge the thing is that they don't love implementing that knowledge yeah, behavior. Yeah. First, let's talk a little bit about the knowledge. Let's talk about the books that you read. You, you showed me, you, you, yeah. you just named two, but I would like to repeat that again. And yeah. then let's talk about how you implemented that knowledge and modified your behavior in such a way that helped you save the money and travel the world. So first, which book would you recommend besides the one that you just told me? So the one that I told you, I got it from a person who... The name of the book again is? The Total Money Makeover, Dave Ramsey. Okay. So this is the most important book ever. All of his books are, are very solid. Um, and every time a person gets that book, they get, no, no joking, they get more for more people. And those people get more for more people. It happened with my best friends, uh -huh. with family members. Like th that book is always in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Just to like give it to people. But not everybody, um, you know, is interested in that. But I also got 30 day money cleans. Mm -hmm. I also got an, more journals about budgeting. And also like, you don't have to spend money on books. It's an investment. But online, there's all the information you need. There's mm -hmm. a lot of resources online that are free. Mm -hmm. A lot of apps that could help you get in track. Like if mm -hmm. you make that your priority, you'll, you'll get it right. So, so what did you learn from, from the uh, Ramsey's book that, that, then, that then you implemented in your life? Tell me about that. So I learned about just doing the budget um, he said, like, first, you need to do a $1,000 emergency fund mm -hmm. just for, you just try to save it for whatever, the car broke, the car breaks, um, something happened in the house, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have that $1,000, you can use it for that and not from your salary. Okay. And then you do the snowball thing we talk about, like, listing your debts from small to largest mm -hmm. and then just be all like from the third step is be all like from three to six months of expenses what i did was build six months of my salary okay and how long did that I, took you i would say three years okay so you saved off for three years to yeah travel the world and yeah. you said something very important about saving that first thousand mm -hmm. dollars that uh, that's even though that's not a huge amount. Yeah, it's still a good goal to have. Yeah, psychologically, learning yeah. that you can save a thousand dollars. Yeah, using your willpower, yeah. I believe will do a, way more for your mindset. Yeah, that making an extra 
thousand yeah. dollars, you know, from from a service that you sold. Yeah. At least if you're having, you know, issues with saving up money. Yeah. So, um, how did you save up that first thousand dollars, having you know all your other expenses? It's just I first paid off all my medical, and then I it was like a thousand. I got it. <laughs> 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 so once you once you stop like spending the money on the on the medical expenses, exactly. just oh okay, yeah. finally I can save up money. Yeah. How long yeah. did it took you to save that first thousand dollars after you? I'm not gonna kid you. It was like less than five months. It's like <laughs> less than that, way less than that. But it's just I, I, as I said, I was privileged enough to the first year and a half, two years to mm -hmm. not pay rent because I was living with my mom. Okay. So then I Which is a common thing for, yeah. for you know, for young, for people like, well, well when you were at that age, you were, I suppose, yeah. 21, 22? Yeah. So it's, it's not uncommon to live with your parents. So mm -hmm. I, I believe in this, in the following thing. And it's living with your parents until you have 20, 25 years mm -hmm. or more than that. I got married and then I moved out from house. <laughs> That's what happened. Why would I? Why would I renounce to that privilege? So, you know, of living with my parents and just paying my own expenses. I don't see it as a sin, you know. Um, and here in the Dominican Republic, it's actually very common to live with your parents until you get married. My yeah. wife and I li live yeah. with each other with you know with, with our parents. Yeah. Um, my brother lived with my parents until he got married he got married almost at 30 years old but still he <laughs> lived with mom and dad <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's and most of my friends That's here in dominican republic they also lived with their parents just before they got married yeah. i believe that that's so that's smart you know because trying yeah. to find a flat and pay a thousand two thousand dollars for a crappy apartment you know yeah. it's not a you might feel free but the anxiety, the stress of getting that and of seeing your money being taken like that, yeah. knowing that you can save that money living maybe yeah. in groups with friends or with your parents. It's just, I don't think it's worth it. Well, so in your opinion, are we more or less agree with that same opinion? Yeah, but I believe like in the States, it's more common that at the age of 25 or whatever age, 22 they just want to get out of the house so yeah. there's a, a lot of things there's also immigrants that they have no choice they also live with friends but they pay rent and uh -huh. rent is not cheap anywhere in the states well some places but not like new york miami california texas those places so yeah it's a cultural advantage that vr has <laughs> but it's not the same here and tell me about it because right now i'm living by myself and paying all this money on rent. Oh man, <laughs> you could be saving that money. I, so, I know that, but I have no choice. So I got to stri change strategies. And, <laughs> so but you can you... only do it. It's possible. I just want to say that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. That you put your mind into, it sounds cheesy, but everything that you can do is possible. So now that you have, you pay your own, you know, the, the, the place that you, that you have, and do you still have student loans? Yes, I do. So yes, how I do you manage all of that and also be able to save a little bit of money just in case something yeah. happens? So I do have my savings. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, I just say if I get, if I save more this month and the next one, I just said, okay, I'm going to use this money from my savings and just pay off one of my student loans or pay half of it or something like that. But it's, it's harder now. But what I did recently is I got another job, so I renegotiate my salary. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> there's always ways to play around with it. So I'm going to have more savings. I'm going to pay off my stuff because I believe, like, paying everything, my car and my student loans, I will save so much money. I will be saving a lot of money. Oh, that, that's real. End, you know? that's so real. that's very important to put it towards a mortgage or traveling or just, I don't know, retire early. <laughs> so, yeah. So still, you, you now have more expenses. 
Yeah, I do. But you still travel the world and you still yeah. travel from place to place. Yeah. How do you manage that? I just say all I can. I cannot stress that so, enough. Sorry that I interrupt you. Yeah. You do you do not pay that with a credit card. You actually save up and pay it with your savings. Yeah, I don't use the credit card at all. Less than five percent for sure. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That, that's good to know. So you actually yeah. save up for for those uh, traveling expenses and to meet new people, new places. Yeah. And tell me about that experience. Has it been worth yeah. it to save the money to travel to of different course, places? Totally. Some people yeah. were, were calling me crazy, like I should buy a house or something. I was like, no, this is what I want, you know? So I just have savings. Mm -hmm. For example, last year I got invited to a wedding in India. Mm -hmm. So I was you, like, and did you go to? I yeah, think so I, because I saw some yeah. pictures. Yeah, it was a five day wedding in India, <laughs> and I went like for two weeks. Wow. So I was like, okay, maybe um, I have all these expenses, but I have my savings, so it wouldn't hurt to use a little bit of my savings for this trip. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did, and now I'm back to you know saving more and just putting into my savings. Mm -hmm. I just. Don't have a goal on my savings. I just want to build it up as much as I can. So that's what happened at first before going to Barcelona and getting my master's degrees and traveling. Mm -hmm. so I saved three years all I could. My friends were like, why do you save? I'm like, I don't know yet. <laughs> I just want, I don't know. And they were like, I'm buying this car. I'm, I'm using every cent of my paycheck. And I was like, Okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm, I feel comfortable with this. And then the opportunity comes up for going to Barcelona and get a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So I was like, holy cow, I have all this money here. I can go for a year to Barcelona. I, can, I just paid in one payment for uh, the school. I just did like, okay. Uh, Bam. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get it over with okay now I'll find all my accommodations expenses and mm -hmm. then like, i had enough money to travel to all the places I so could. wait let me try to understand this <laughs> so you had you saved up so much money that you could that you could pay the 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 college yeah. master's yeah. degree completely, completely and also live from yeah. that money for one year in europe all the expenses, groceries, um, I don't and, know. And you supply. weren't making money. I wasn't that. making money. I never had a job while I was in Europe. Wow. I never had a job. So you actually saved a lot of money. I actually did. I'm not going <laughs> to I actually did. <laughs> it's insane. So, and then I had. And all started with that first thousand dollars, I believe. All started with that. Those first that, that first thousand dollars and all the medical expenses paid off. Oh man, that's and reading so and getting wow. informed. I got a little obsessed with it. Uh -huh. So I got a little obsessed. Um, Dave Ramsey has a term that is like a cell intensity mm -hmm. because uh, you gotta put yourself like if you were like a cell running from a cheetah. Okay. <laughs> You got to just focus only on that. And I was like, I like this. So I, I just say, and I was very happy. Like, oh, this opportunity came along and I won't have any money from my parents. But I have a lot of savings, so why not? Okay. So, and I believe that that uh, education that you got in Barcelona paid yes. off now with a new job that you have. Yes, it paid off. Which we came with a of, yeah. salary increase. Yeah with a bigger salary and now that i'm paying the rent by myself mm -hmm. oh, i got nice. another job so i got a bigger <laughs> salary uh -huh. so now is the time when you're young to renegotiate your salary or go to other um companies mm -hmm. and have a better salary mm -hmm. that also helps so uh, let's talk a little, a little bit more about behavior okay mm -hmm. because that's where the people most people struggle with because it's very easy to imagine, oh, I'm going to save $300 every month for one year. And that turns into $2,000, $3,000 of savings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save 10% of my salary, which is something people think is easy. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, um, 
how did you modify your behavior in a way that you could save up that money? All that money because that's a lot of money. A one year expensive of food and stuff in Europe, which is like very expensive and also pay off the, 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 the school, the college uh, completely. I Which did. actions did you modify in, in order to achieve yeah. that? So to be honest, every time I was spending money or I was tempted to, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of temptation, new phone, go to this concert, all these friends inviting you out, buying this makeup is really huge here. That makeup is uh, expensive when you add it up. Makeup is expensive and it's like a huge industry and all the girls are like, makeup. So I was thinking like, okay, do I want this $50 makeup or $100 makeup? But how, look, how good would it look in my bank account for going to Europe? So <laughs> I want this purse. It's $200. But that could mean one of, uh, a good part of my rent in Europe. So I was always thinking about $10, I'll just, okay, I'll just save it. $50, $200, I would just visualize myself spending it in Europe. It could, this could be my rent. This could so be you visualized yourself yeah. flying visualized. to Europe and having yeah. that great time learning yeah. and learning from other cultures. Yeah, totally. So, so visualization was a big part of your, of the was. things that you did. It okay. was. It's very easy to spend two hundred dollars every weekend. So if you think about it, it's six hundred dollars. It's a plane ticket. So it's you know it it was that visualization and just like very focused on it. I can get very focused on what I want. Man, that's and very people, true. People can do that if they wanted to. Wow, so that that's you know um what you just said like. Hey, instead of spending the $200 every weekend, save up and yeah. travel to somewhere. It adds up to. Yeah, and in the U.S., it's even easier if you want to travel to another state to, to meet a friend or something. Yeah. It, 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 it is my understanding that flights inside the United States are really cheap. Like to go from, from New York to, I don't know, to Florida. Is, is that no. real? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just asking. <laughs> I, I think flights in the United States are very expensive unless they have like $50 thing, but that's never, I never bought a ticket like that. It, there's very expensive. You can go to New York for $400, $600. From Florida. From Florida, yeah. Okay. So it's very, very expensive. But in Europe, I, I bought once a ticket from Barcelona to France. It was 10 euro. Air? <laughs> Yeah, the flight. So it's very, very cheap to fly to me to know all of Europe. To I, I bought um, bus tickets um, from I don't know from Paris to to Berlin to Amsterdam, Berlin to Amsterdam, oh. Paris, like everywhere, and it was like fifteen euro, twenty euro. So that also helped me um, with my traveling because in Europe. Everything is very expensive. It's except, very cheap. It's very cheap. except moving okay. around. Moving around is very cheap. And also, um, you need to take that into account as also the accommodations are very cheap. Here oh. in Florida or in the States, you can get a hotel room for $200, $300. Yeah. Airbnb could be cheaper, but around the 70s or whatever dollars. Mm -hmm. But there's, if you want to travel, there's a lot of, tips that I can give you. Tell me about that. So um, you obviously have um, the hostels, um, which are very cheap, but I personally don't like it. I travel a lot to wholesales with tour groups and all that. Oh and man, and, and you know the movies talk about those <laughs> places where you, they kill you and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> I think they're very safe in a way, but they mm -hmm. also like, you are staying in a room with like 10 people you don't know. So oh, you, I don't know, uh -uh. I don't know. And also for, from a hygiene perspective, I don't like hostels. I'm not <laughs> the most, I'm not the most like, you know, I need this five-star hotel, but I didn't like it. So I found other ways. There's Airbnb if you travel with a group uh -huh. 
and it comes very, very cheap. In just like very cheap, everything in Europe accommodations. But there's also um, my hidden gem secret is the couch surfing. Have you heard about that? No. You haven't heard about couch, couch surfing. What do you think about? I, I believe that someone it? rents you like sleep in my couch for a day or two in my house. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about <laughs> that. So you, um, you go into a nap and you say, I'm going to travel to Amsterdam. Uh -huh. which I did and I did on couch surfing. Um, so you slept in a family house, like in a couch? No, it depends. So yeah, 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 explain that to me. <laughs> <laughs> and how safe is that for, also, for someone? It's for free. And also, it's free. Oh, crap, it's free. Explain so, that to me. So you say you put it out there uh -huh. and people can see. What do you mean with put it out there? You how do you there, put it out there? Say, like you said, oh, it's going there's to an app for that. Yeah. There's an app, there's a web page. He said he's traveling to... So Amsterdam. the name of the app is called Couch, Couch Surfing. Surfing. Oh, yeah. so that's the app and that's the website. Yeah, Couch Surfing. Name. Couch okay. Surfing. Okay. So at first I was like, that is very sketchy, but it's not. Let me tell you. Um, I loved it because you're staying in a home. They can give you a sofa, right? And they can give you a room. Man. So it, it, it depends. So uh -huh. on the app, you see the person's profile, their interests, what they like, the countries they visited. And they also, it's like an Airbnb, you have all and these... Do they have like reviews and stuff like that? Yeah, they have a lot of reviews. Some people don't, some people do. So I go for like a lot of legit reviews and uh -huh. they have like pictures with the host and all that. And I think like hygiene perspective is best because you have like maybe your own restroom or it's just like, a house restroom that is mm -hmm. very very clean or something mm -hmm. I'm kind of picky on that and you sleep on a couch or on a room that they they change the sheets it's not mm -hmm. like in a hostel that you don't know uh -huh. what's going on so it was um, a very good experience how many times I, do you did you couch I, surfed I did it three times and it's a very good experience because the hosts are interested in cultures in knowing people in traveling so and they you and you know, talk with them and you develop yeah. a okay yeah you develop a friendship even and <laughs> also you get the the tips from the city how to avoid scams mm -hmm. all the hidden spots they can even well for me they took me like to many places and mm -hmm. to get to know the city so it was very very interesting i loved it and it was i cannot recommend it enough you just have to be very careful with your stay in Amsterdam okay. I stayed with a uh, the cutest old man <laughs> there he is he gave me a room he was so nice he he took me to yoga classes <laughs> he took me to vegetarian dinner and then we we volunteered to clean up the plates and all that uh -huh. volunteering he took me to the trams everywhere and it was so cool but then I also had my friends who we also did all the things together what do you friends. mean friends like friends from friends school from school that also were there or mm -hmm. people I knew and I had that combination of mm -hmm. getting to know it by a lo local perspective and by just tourist perspective and I also did it in France with a very nice guy and I wasn't scared at all I really Trusted in the reviews, and I got a feel of the people when you chat with them before you get there. Mm -hmm. And they took me everywhere, and it was amazing. And you did that for a full year. Well, yeah, but I did that three times, like couch surfing. I went to a lot. No, of I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking like traveling Europe. Oh, traveling, for yeah. A full year. Traveling, and it's very wow. cheap to travel. Wow. All the expenses are very cheap. So, if someone is getting is trying to do that, what would mm -hmm. be in your opinion, like the number one advice to achieve that, to travel to Europe and, you know, just do what you did. Just have a goal and have a budget. Just try to budget how much you're going to spend or how much you think you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. Take into account the culture um, of every place, the money, the currency, I mean, um, the stays. Like try to manage that. Try to 
like be on top of that or all the expenses you might have because in every country it's different. Some mm -hmm. countries are very expensive, some are not. So take that into account. Asia is very, very cheap. So they may want to go there and because it's just like ridiculously cheap. Like for a dollar, you get meals and all that. So, so I have two last questions. You can totally do it. Num number one, mm -hmm. I forgot to ask you to how many places you've been. So how many countries have you been and uh, have you traveled to? <laughs> I think just in that year, I travel because I, I don't have the number in my head of overall, but just in that year, I did 15 countries and 27 cities. Wow. And you met tons of people. I met tons of people. It's amazing. Tell me one, one of your favorite like, stories of, of traveling. The, the, besides the one, you just told me one about the, the, the old guy that drove you through <laughs> and everything. Is, is there any other story that... You just say, man, I can die today, but this story will, will be with me forever. Oh, my God. That's so much pressure. There are, like, so many things. Oh, my God. What, what the first I one that, uh, that you have in your mind right now. I think going to India, uh -huh. they're very warm and welcoming. And What happened in India that you say, man, that I, I will never forget it? Just, well, it's just the welcoming of people, the culture. How, how nice they are, but also when I went to the wedding, mm -hmm. they honor a lot of the guests, of the international guests. Mm -hmm. They treat you like royalty. It's not that in our countries, we're like trying to, <laughs> not to have too many people on the wedding. They want the more people, uh, the best, and more international, the best. And they just treat me like royalty. They took me everywhere. We had a lot of expenses from the wedding mm -hmm. uh, paid for. So all the hotels, the transportation, the meals were covered by them. Mm -hmm. And it was like a huge celebration every day, the whole day. And I just like, and they were all very welcoming. People I didn't knew, they were all just talking to me. I made friends with the bartenders, with the people who, who gives you the food, with all the tour guides. It just, I don't know, it really changed me. It's not like, Wow, this funny story because I cannot remember anything right now. But um, I really loved it. And also going to Morocco and going to the desert, it was very breathtaking. It was amazing. Seeing all that sand. like Yeah. And wow. it was the best food ever. But seeing all the sand, <laughs> all the stars in the sky. Oh, so you can like, actually see the, the stars. Yeah, because there's no city nearby. It's just a desert. They're very deep into the desert and i also enjoyed i went by myself to island like mm -hmm. two days and i enjoyed so much so i was in the blue lagoon and walking through the city and it was magical that place is n nothing compared to any place i've been <laughs> so it's just like i don't know all these places just like it feel my heart i don't know it just i don't have any funny story right now but I do have many, I just can't remember. But those are my favorite places that just blew my mind. You know, but just seeing how you like brighten up, just talking yeah. about, <laughs> about your experience, says yeah. everything I was looking for. Yeah. I don't need those stories. I, people yeah. can, just by watching your expressions, I can see that you, uh -huh. that's something that you say to yourself constantly. I need to repeat that, I need to repeat that. Yeah. I need to keep traveling the world, I need to keep, yeah meeting new people i need to go to more weddings in india you know? <laughs> but yeah like you meet a lot of people from mm -hmm. around the world so it gives you opportunity to go to those places as well mm -hmm. and people are very open in europe so you talk to everybody so nice. it's, it's very nice. nice so one last thing what, i would what? like to end the conversation yeah with you telling the audience the listener a word of encouragement for them to let's say travel the world or save money or achieve the the dreams that they have so it's all you <laughs> encourage them tell them something so, to make them feel empowered of their future i just want to say first of all you have to live like no one else so you can later live like no one else that is the main thing i want to say that if i did it with no money, 
I was a little privileged for a time, but I was also very knowledgeable. Just get your knowledge, get your goals, and just work towards them. Then nothing can stop you. You have once you have all your goals very clear, all the noise goes away. And once you start working on yourself, many other of the many other areas of your life improve. Mm-hmm. So I just want to tell everybody to really focus on what they want and just save a lot of money. <laughs> the main thing, try yeah. just not waste your money. Awesome. Lisette, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that you took, uh, let's say, this 45, 60 minutes out of your busy schedule to record yeah. this with me. And I want, I, I just, I'm just very grateful. Because this is the first time you've recorded something like this. Oh my God. And, and you did so well. And I truly, truly, yeah. truly appreciate that you took the risk of actually yeah. hopping into this call with me and talk about your experience about, uh, of traveling, of saving money, of how you destroyed that yeah. debt that you have with the medical expenses and then how you achieved what you did at such a young age, travel, yeah. travel to Europe, travel half of the earth, let's say, <laughs> and also yeah. pay your, your education in, in, in Barcelona, Spain. Yeah. That's an amazing, an amazing accomplishment. And I want to congratulate you for that because that is yeah. special, especially when you did it by yourself. You yeah. worked your ass off to achieve that. Even though you say, oh, I was a little bit privileged because I had, I lived with my mom. How many people live with their mom and don't do what yeah. you did? You did it out of your own accord with your own, with your, you self-funded your stuff yeah. and you had the courage of going against the, how do you say this? Against even your own friends telling you like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. You, that social pressure, you ignored it because you had your goals clear. Yeah. You had your, you visualized yourself traveling to those places and you actually changed your behavior. Right. Which is the most, is the most important and hardest part of doing anything in order to travel the world and achieve your dreams. So thank yeah. you so much, Lisette. Thank you I so really much. enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed this. <laughs> I really enjoyed my first time. Oh, <laughs> so, so if you have any, any other things you would like to say later on in another, let's say, podcast that we could record together, just yeah. let me know. Let's just yeah, let me know. Sure. We could talk more in detail about budgeting, about yeah. personal finances, about anything that you would actually like to teach other people to anything do. Anything you like or whatever the people ask for. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I'll ask for feedback to see, yeah. to see what questions they have for you and then we maybe record a new, a new, a new thank recording. Thank so you so thank much. you so much. Thank really. you so much for, for your time and having me. Yeah, and this is like <laughs> the first time we even like talked for so much because yeah. we interacted, you know, we in church and stuff like that, but not like this which yeah. is kind of special also for, for me, you know? Yeah, and, we matured, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we've matured both, you know, so <laughs> we hopefully we can, we can uh, meet yeah. again, maybe in Miami, maybe here. And yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Right. And see right. you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.